beautiful Scorpio friends and welcome to your horoscope for September of 2020 where Scorpio this month we have Mars one of your ruling planets going retrograde but I actually think that this is a lovely time for you with Mars in retrograde to really get back to health get back to the roots of what's happening what's processing through your daily routine I also think that this is just an area of your life where your actions and your daily commitment to actions is going to be heavy under revision I don't want to leave anything out here that makes it seem like that this Mars retrograde is just gonna you're just gonna go back just look over your desires I don't think that that's it for you Scorpio I really don't I think that this is going to take a lot of courage for you I think it's going to take courage to change in this area and to go back and to say that's not really working those actions are not really satisfying something for me at this particular time more so like those actions, those desires don't fit the current person that I am right now. So it's time for me to be seeing how I would like to step forward. It's literally like the Mars retrograde in this particular area of your chart gives you a whole new name and a whole new flavor. So I think we have that to look for this forward to this month for sure. As well this month though, the autumn equinox gifts are out, so feel free to take advantage of them. I'll put a link in the description box down below. You can also find them at stormygrace.com. And we have got beautiful visitors coming this month to the Eat and Greets. Gary Caton will be back to help us get ready for Mercury Retrograde in October. Achuta Bava will be here. Fellow YouTuber Athen Cimenti will be here, and we're going to talk about sidereal, true sidereal astrology. Becca Tarnas will be here. Just lots of good stuff is going on this month. So make sure that you do not miss out. And if you have missed any of the Eat and Reads, you can always go back and watch them in the playlist. And if you are experiencing what many of us are experiencing is like craziness with these ads here lately, it's political season. Everybody's buying out lots of stuff, even the hand lotion people. So if you just can't take it, you can also come over to the Stormy Grace podcast where there are no ads right now. And you can check out the, the uh, interviews in the Eat and Greets for absolutely free, okay? All right, let's jump in and take a look at what's happening for you this month, Scorpio. Right at the beginning of the month, on the first or the second, just depending on where you live, we're going to have this full moon happening in the energy of Pisces. Now, the full moon says that something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or an adjustment. A shift needs to come, and it does because so much light is is shed on certain situations that are going on. It's so much light where either you couldn't see it because it was like someplace back here and so much light gets shed and so you can turn around, you can look at the whole thing or it was right here and it's like there's been this veil or you just didn't know. So the full moon comes brings all of this light to the table and in the energy of Pisces, it's really this question of where where has something been hidden? Where are you suffering? Where is there a place where you could actually be being more forgiving? You could surrender to win a little bit more in this particular area. Now, this full moon lights up your fifth house space. Now, the first thing that I think of is, you know, it's September. I'm thinking about the kids. They're going back to school. Where have you had to surrender to win to maybe something in technology? Where have you had to surrender to win? Are your children getting older? What is it about the child? child and children feature in your life right now where you're having to not suffer, not push, not try and be in so control, but kind of let some things flow. But I also think that this is a beautiful full moon if you are trying to launch and or Pisces can bring things back from the past real easy, relaunch a business or a project or an idea that you had even a couple years ago. You know, maybe you started it and you just couldn't do it. You had to have work. You had to always be at work. You were never at home to get it done. Uh, throw in a pandemic, right? And then we're all at home where you have time or have been put in a position to relaunch that. Either way, this full moon is going to say, where do you surrender to win? And where can you step up and be of service, maybe even very creative creatively in order to allow this area some space to breathe and to express and to have some joy and some play and some new beginnings. On the fifth, we're going to have Mercury moving into the energy of Libra. So just right behind you. So into the 12th house space. Now, Mercury and Libra brings a lot of diplomacy to the table, first of all. But the thing that I keep seeing for you over and over and over again, as I've gone over this horoscope, um, Scorpio, is that because this is going to bring Mercury's energy to your 12th house space, it's really telling me that in the area of projects that you're working on that maybe are behind the scenes, maybe you're studying something you're researching, you're doing something that is kind of hidden or it hasn't been seen in a while. Now that full moon said, hey, 
here's some great energy to maybe bring that project out of hiding. And Mercury says, yeah, let's go back here and look over this and tinker this and see what we can do to bring it forward. Or here's this conversation. Here's this relationship that we needed to have and we need to bring it into the light. Whatever it is, Mercury is going to help you back here to get into good relation, find the balance, make some decisions back here. And the other thing that I see is that in that balance, in that thing that's maybe unseen right now, what you are doing this month is really working on the spiritual side. Spirituality will open the doors for you this month. It's all trust your hunches, trust your dreams, trust your intuition, trust what you got through meditation, whatever it is, trust spiritual guides are trying to open some doors for you. Now, even if you don't practice with guides or anything like that, sit down, meditate, take care of your spiritual space, take care of you, give yourself some respite. Do you need a break? Do you just need to sleep, have some time down, isolation to like let the mind clear, whatever it is, what will come to you through that will be little sparks of light of how you're going to bring this thing out into the light as we move into the next season. Now on the 6th, we see Venus entering into the energy of Leo. So this is going to light up the tip top of your chart, the 10th house. We've definitely got something in the career zone going on. Now I told you at the beginning of the video, Mars is going to take this retrograde in the 6th house space. So we're looking at what's the commitment to daily routines. Has your commitment to your daily routine at work really served you well? Around a project, is it serving you well? In the 10th house here, what are you... What are you allowing Venus to pull into you? You're expressing it. You're putting it out there. You're taking the lead. You're saying, this is my special sauce. I've done this, or I, this is, I have trailed this, right? I've pioneered this. And Venus is bringing some kind of accolade to you. This could also be a promotion very easily at work, or you take on a little bit more responsibility, but you you don't hate it. That's the thing. You don't hate it. You're not like, oh, I cannot. You're like, okay. I'm prepared for this. So I love what Venus is trying to bring you in the career zone. And if you do happen to be somebody who is bringing um, a project back, you're applying for a position that you wanted before, you're going back to something in some way, this Venus will make this area very magnetic and very attractive for you as well. Now on the 9th, Mars actually takes that retrograde. He's going to start it at 28 degrees of Aries and move all the way back to 15 degrees of Aries. So make sure you mark that in your chart, okay? And he'll be coming out of retrograde November 13th. Now while he is in this retrograde, this is a reinvention. Mars retrograde is our human doing. Mars is our human doing. So as he retrogrades, we're going back over, how do I do this? Why do I do this? What's my desire? Do I desire to continue this action? This is really a place where Mars is in domicile in Aries. He is happy. He is comfortable. So you're getting the full blessing of this energy pointed backwards to say, what am I putting my energy and my efforts into and do they make sense? Do I need to go grab that project, that relationship, that thing I feel like defines me from the past and really get it ready to be good here in my presence? I love, love, love what this next handful of months is going to show us and also what it's going to show us, Scorpio, to put down, surrender to win with that energy. You're practicing it in a spiritual space. Your head's getting wrapped around it in a spiritual space and you'll be able to make it real in a more material space as well. On the 13th, we've got Jupiter coming out of retrograde in the energy of Capricorn at 18 degrees, lighting up your third house space. Now, Jupiter went retrograde back in May, along with Saturn, who's also coming out of retrograde this month. But Jupiter very specifically here in Capricorn in this third house space is a place of, of self-discipline. Right? Jupiter has said, do you have the skills? Do you have the training? Do you have the communication? Um, or do you have the studies? to do what you need to do to achieve the goal. Jupiter really wants to achieve these goals, okay? But he wants you to realize it's going to take a big mind. It's going to take a lot of faith. It's going to take the training. It's going to take expanding out of your comfort zone, outside of the structures. Capricorn, if you're going to make 
the gold. There's more possible here than maybe you're even giving it credit for. I do think that this retrograde too, because Jupiter is benefic, so he's always working stuff into you, but as he gets in retrograde, it starts going like this. It's very, very slow. So he comes out of retrograde and it's like, I was trying to get you that blessing. Here you go. You know what I mean? So it can kind of bring it around and it stops the delay and it's like everything's not held up like, you know, highway traffic anymore. It can start to move forward a lot more freely. So I would expect... You know, if you were if you were trying to write, you felt like you had writer's block, you were trying to get that website up and going, those product pictures, that class you wanted to take, now you may find that the resources show up for you to be able to do those things. On the 17th, we've got the new moon happening in the energy of Virgo, and this is going to light up your 11th house space. Now, in the new moon, we plant these seeds of intention here, right? What do you want to see happen over the next four weeks? What do you want to see happen over the next year in the big cycle that we're looking at? Now, Virgo is analytical. Virgo knows the step-by-step -step process of what needs to happen. I'm telling you very truly, Scorpio, if you're trying to launch something or put something out there, Virgo is going to show you in the socials, in social media, in the long-range plan, goal, and design that you've got how to do it step-by-step-by-step. -step -step. Let this moon help you. Ask for the help that you need. Ask for the guidance that you need at this particular moon. The other thing is that because Virgo is analytical, you've got to stop and kind of realize that maybe all you understand is that you don't understand what to do next. And then this is a, allows you to humble yourself and ask for the help that you need going forward but this is a beautiful expression of this moon this moon wants the highest of integrity so that you can achieve something now virgo is also the natural ruler of sixth house you've got mars retrograde in your actual sixth house of the general so this kind of gives me this sense that again virgo's energy is stepping in here to get you the day by day play by play let's take this one little bite at a time so we can get this thing done okay Somebody's taking care of maybe a parent or you are in a care position this month and I think you you've been maybe in this care position for some time and there's some kind of like promotion like something of benefit is coming to you but you you tried to go for this in the past and you didn't quite get it or earlier in this year even and now it's going to start coming forward to you after this new moon okay. On the 22nd, we see the sun step into the energy of Libra. Now we've got both the sun and Mercury here. Light, heat, life, and vitality. Truly, spirituality is what opens doors for you this month. Really trust your dreams. Journal. Trust the symbols that are showing up for you. If you're seeing 11, 11, 3, 3, 3, whatever you're seeing that's popping up, trust that. Now, I do think the sun here as well, even though it's bringing the influence of that Venetian, um, Libran kind of quality to the table, which Venus and, and the the sun getting together is always a beautiful conversation. I do think that this energy is putting you um, with Mars retrograde. There is a conflict that maybe does need your attention. Um, it's it's these houses are opposing each other. So what is happening over here in a quiet space? Is this maybe an enemy that you didn't know of? And this can also be an illness, right? Do you have an illness that's going on? Or do you have, you know, an illness that you, you've known of and for some reason it's exacerbated at this time and you're needing to deal with that conflict and you're having to have the step-by-step, process-by-process um way through that either way the sun is definitely going to bring some light to this 12th house space it's wonderful re for retreats it's wonderful for retreating if you need a little bit of rest as well or working on things by yourself okay on the 27th, we see Mercury leave that Libra energy and move into your sign. So now you can become the chatty Kathy you've always wanted to be. Just kidding, Scorpio. But it definitely does bring a lot more communication, decision making to your table for sure. And in the energy of Scorpio in your first house, you are thinking about you. You are thinking about what you're doing, how you're showing up, what you're speaking, the nature of, the perception of your relationships and how they're relating, how you're relating to all of those things. So this is not necessarily a time where I think with Mercury in your sign that you have to be really polite and really diplomatic about things. I mean, those are always good qualities, but I do think that Mercury here in your sign is having you ask some deeper questions, right? You're asking questions about what's, why is this happening? What's this doing? What do I think about that? What does my body 
need. These are, what is it? What does it mean if I put myself out here under my own name? These are big questions of the month for you. Now, as we close out this month on the 29th, we're going to see Saturn coming out of retrograde at 25 degrees of Capricorn. So again, he's been retrograde since May along with his buddy Jupiter over there. But as Saturn comes out of retrograde, now you have a focus. And it is nothing new. You have seen this third house area, your thinking, your education, that website, that book, things with your siblings, contracts, negotiations, buying, selling. These have been focal points. But the way that you communicate and you make decisions and that you put information out there, Scorpio, you are focused on it now as Saturn comes out of retrograde because Saturn is saying, did you learn? Is there some mastery here? in this communication. What have we made solid that has taken Scorpio to this next level? Did you put that resume out there? You know, and did you put a resume out there like in May and you heard like nothing? You're all, what happened? Did it die? Did my, where's my resume? Whatever it is, all of those things that Saturn comes in, the focus will pull back into this third house area and discipline, self discipline will equal some freedom here for you and also take you to that next level. So I would expect to see some really serious, significant, and important new structures coming into your life in this third house area that will be important as we roll through 2021. They maybe have your name assigned to it. Maybe it's time for you to be known in your house, in your community, in your sibling group as something else. And it doesn't always have to be that you're rolling out products. Scorpio, I really want to frame that for you. You know, if you had a family member pass away and now you've got the house, but there's other siblings, but you're the one who gets to make the decisions about what's happening as the house, this is you under a new name. We're seeing you different. We're seeing you have to take different day by day actions, thought process and things like that. So it doesn't just have to be that you're coming on YouTube. I promise Scorpio. Okay. All right, my friends, I think that this is going to definitely be a month where you're going to do a lot of revision, but there's also a fair amount of just take it easy and breathe for a minute. What do you need in the quiet space this month, Scorpio, so that you can be well and that you can be healthy, okay? All right, my beautiful Scorpio friends, I will see you very soon in the eat and greets, in the Equinox appointments, and in all of the videos coming up next. I love you guys very much. I'll talk to you next month. Bye, everyone.